Hi, I'm Manny with Marine Depot. I'm excited to be here sharing our love for the hobby with all of you. Please consider liking and sharing this video if you find it useful. Subscribe to our channel and click that bell to receive notifications when we release new videos. This ensures that you don't miss any of the great content that we have planned ahead. In today's video, we're going to discuss what to do with aggressive tank mates. When we picture a home aquarium, we picture a tranquil space filled with color and movement that's relaxing to watch. At least most of us do, right? But reef tanks can be a battleground not only for our corals but for our fish too, as they jostle for territory, feeding, and even breeding rights. Aggressive fish can stress out tank mates, attack new fish, and even attack their owners. They can quickly make life in your tank a living hell. So let's look at what we can do to alleviate that. First place to start is with fish selection. In the planning stages of your aquarium oasis, start by making a wish list of all the fish that you want to put in it. Research their size, hardiness, and aggression, placing the hardiest but most peaceful species in first and the most aggressive in last. That gives the peaceful species time to settle in, rest, and find a home before being forced to coexist with someone who's naturally more aggressive. Let's use, as an example, the common practice of starting with the introduction of a damsel fish first. What's wrong with that, you may ask? They are hardy, pretty, readily available, and inexpensive, right? They are good at surviving the odd water quality, initial fluctuation parameters, and beginner mistakes. However, they are naturally territorial and aggressive fish. It's in their nature to stake out a patch of turf and defend it vigorously from other fish that enter the area which in your case, that territory could be the whole tank. Any new fish you put in there will be the target of your damselfish aggression. So least aggressive fish first and most aggressive last, even if last means six, 12, or even 18 months down the line. Next, ask yourself if you really want or need that aggressive fish at all. Know that when it does turn nasty, it will be difficult to catch and remove from your now beautifully aquascaped system that may already have mature rock work and corals. A common mistake is to assume that not all members of the species are aggressive, or the one that you're looking at in your local fish store isn't causing any trouble in his or her holding tank, and therefore he or she should be fine. Unlike us humans, all individuals of the same fish species act and react in the same way to the same stimulus. So no amount of training will prevent an adult purple tang or an adult emperor angelfish from being aggressive towards others of the similar species. Again, it's in their nature and they are hardwired to chase others of their own kind in the wild as they compete for resources like food or mates. So if you look it up and the books say the species is aggressive, the internet says it's aggressive, and the local fisher says it's aggressive, there is very little you will be able to do to prevent that. It's definitely nature over nurture when it comes to marine fish, and as tempting as the species is to keep, if you want a quiet tank, leave it in there in the store. Next is tank size. The larger the tank, the easier it will be to accommodate aggressive species. So choose as big of a tank as you can. Don't fill it with large fish species and any aggression that does occur should be easier to manage. In the wild, fish territories can vary from just a few inches to a few feet to even a few yards across. So for some fish, even the largest aquarium doesn't fall within their natural territory size. And remember, even the most massive home aquarium is still tiny compared to the vastness of the oceans. Large tanks make it possible to mix surgeon fish species, brasses, or accommodate more than one pair of clownfish, as one pair can live at one end of the tank and the other pair can live at the other end without having to fight over territory. Go big and some aggression traits may fade away. Next, look at your mix of fish and if you're adding two similar species that compete. Zebrasoma tanks are more aggressive to other Zebrasoma species, but less aggressive to Nasos and Pinocatus. So get one of each instead of three different Zebrasoma species, and they will be far less likely to fight. 
The same with damsels, wrasses, angels, and even gobies. Fish are much more likely to attack a fish that they see as a threat than one that they don't. So don't mix two similar looking high body yellow fish, even if one is an angel fish and one is a tank, because they may see each other as competition. Instead, mix a yellow fish with a blue fish, then a red fish, then a black and white fish. A high bodied species with a slender body species, a plantivore with a grazing herbivore. And they're all much more likely to get along because they don't see them as a threat to their food, their homes, or any potential mates. Well fed fish are less aggressive than hungry ones. So feed your fish often throughout the day, making sure that each and every one gets a fill of species specific foods. Feed aggressive feeders like puffer fish and trigger fish first so that they can fill their bellies, then not have to dive in teeth first when you drop the smaller food in later. Try feeding both ends of the tank at the same time so that one aggressive fish can't be in two places at once. And feeding floating and sinking food simultaneously, distributing the food so that the entire feeding area can't be dominated by one or two aggressive fish. This technique also allows food to float past all areas and all fish in the tank. If you have an aggressive fish that you don't want to give up or don't have the luxury of upgrading to a larger tank, try a trick that cichlid keepers use and rescape. Catch the aggressor and place it in the sump or in a bucket and rearrange the rocks in the tank. Try to scape in a way that breaks up the line of sight across the length of the tank and form natural caves, peaks, and walls which will lack this natural territory. Once rescaped, put the fish back in and they'll be the new fish for once, forced to explore and find a new home. And sometimes that can be enough to lessen previous aggression. Or do they have a favorite cave or pipe? Move it to the end of the tank where they are less likely to snap at passing fish. Feeling bad for disturbing its home? Don't, he's a jerk, remember? If aggression gets really bad, you may need to add a physical barrier to that tank. Divide an area off with a sheet of acrylic and drill holes in it to allow water to pass through, but not the aggressor. Isolation boxes are great for placing in the tank and putting new fish in to get used to everyone, but they can also be used to hold an aggressive fish that needs a timeout. Or consider moving a repeat offender to your sump long term where they benefit from the same water, but can harm their tank mates. But for every aggressive fish, there is always one that's more aggressive. Consider setting up a tank just for aggressive or predator fish like large angels, puffers, triggers, eels, and lionfish. A boisterous surgeon fish, dancel fish, or angel fish will soon behave themselves in the presence of a larger trigger fish or puffer fish. So aggression can also be managed that way while at the same time allowing you to keep some really cool fish that you wouldn't usually be able to keep in your reef tank. That's all we have for today. If you would like to be part of the discussion, or if you have a story that you know will help a fellow hobbyist, please drop it in the comment section below. Thank you again for tuning in, and don't forget to share this beautiful hobby with somebody you love. With it will be the tarp. Next, mm. next, look at your fish. My bad, my bad. Don't. He's a jerk, remember?